Hello everybody, Lawrence Fleming here. I decided I'd better make another video today because with work and all and things coming up and I've had somebody, I said I was going to skip a day and they said don't release a video every day until Easter. So I'll do that. I may have to make two a day though. So if you see my wardrobe not change, believe me, I have not gone two days wearing the same clothes. Now I may do that when I'm camping, but there's nobody around and Mother Nature has a very good filter. It's in the afternoon now and it's it's really getting busy. We just I just had to wait for a little bit because some kids went by in a four-wheel off-road vehicle driving down the road that we have to get back into here. I pray they're safe. No pads, no helmets. If they flip it, they're in trouble. All right. We're going to continue to wait. Easter is the, the best time, the coolest time, in our opinion, <clears throat> for the rapture. One, because we want it to happen soon. And it matches up with Easter. What better way to get at the world who's been messing with us about Easter for years? It's not about an Easter bunny. Never has been. Satan tries to take everything of God's, claim it for himself, and try to mask it. He's good at it. He's been doing it for a long time. You can't go head to head with him. But in these days, what you've got to make sure you do is pray for yourself, obviously. You want to start with yourself first. You've got to have a good foundation. That doesn't mean we are to be negligent with others. That doesn't mean we're to be prideful of ourselves, but you've got to have yourself on a good, solid foundation. We have a daily prayer to pray. Recognize God and ask for our needs and protect us from the evil or evil one is part of that. Satan's going to try harder than ever now to stop us. After we're gone, those that become Christians when we're gone, He's going to try to kill them. He's going to try to eliminate them. He's tried it in the past, and it still didn't work, and it's never going to work. But some people are going to die. Christians are going to die. They're going to be martyred. That's the whole thing with the mark of the beast. It's not you signing up for a program now. It's not you doing anything until the condition is worship and follow me, take the mark, and then you can buy and sell. When that condition is out there, one, we should be gone, but the rest of the world needs to know that that's the condition that we were warned about. Okay, so what do we do? We ask for things to happen now because we want them. We're asking for the rapture now because we want it. But what's in God's plan? We don't know. That's why part of our daily prayer is, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because we don't know what's best. He has this all planned out. And we ask God for something, you know, that has to do with timing. He probably just laughs. Because I spent a lot of time planning this. It's perfect. You don't want to mess with that. And I thought of a, a good, easy analogy of that. How many of you have cereal sometimes for breakfast? A box of cereal and some milk. Quick, instant food. Would you pour the milk in your bowl first and then add the cereal? No, that's silly. That's laughable. But I think God laughs at us sometimes. Lovingly laughs at us. We don't know what we want. So I've got a couple of scriptures here to read to you about that. One of them you should be very familiar with. Everything has its time. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. This might make a good song. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pick what was planted time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down 
and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and then a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. Continuing on, a time to gain, a time to lose. It's a balancing act. For every one thing, there's another thing that's the opposite. That's the way our life is, and this is why we can't do it without God. Because we don't know how to balance this. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. And a time of war and a time of peace. We don't know what time we're in. What do we do with time? Time for God is, is nothing because he already has seen the end. He's done all this all the way through. He's thought about every possible scenario and he's come up with the best plan. A plan to help us, the world, and a plan to control Satan so that he doesn't mess with the plan. Satan's arrogant. He thinks he can create a new world order, put himself in charge, and here have a better world than God could have created. That's foolish arrogance. That's all it is. And we're given the reason why it won't work. He may not see it, but we certainly can. <clears throat> In the final verse for this video, see then that you walk circumspectly looking around, picking up what's going on. We may not be able to figure out what the timing is, but if we watch what God's doing, we can get an idea of what the timing should be. Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Don't lose a moment of of this time. We don't have much of it. And there's evil all around us. And like I said, you've got to pray for yourself first to get the foundation and then start your circle of praying around you further and further out. Encompass anybody or anything that might interfere with what you're doing if you're working for God. God would love nothing more than to stop Satan, but we have to, we have to ask for it. Satan would love nothing more than to stop us. But we can stop him by commanding him to flee in Jesus' name, of course. In order to have that authority, we have to be repentant. We have to be sin-free. We're sin-free with the help of Jesus, but we have to claim it daily. We can't go a day without sinning. It's our nature. So we've got to pray for ourselves first, pray for our friends and family, and pray for anybody we might come in contact with that might stop us from doing God's will. <clears throat> what do we have here? Making a lot of noise. Uh, and it backfired, it's a motorcycle. Okay. <clears throat> Therefore, do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual singing, making melody in your heart for the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. We know that God has given us 
each a gift. If you don't know what it is, ask God to make it very plain. You can't see all this pollen out here. Every time it comes up, <clears throat> and I don't want to have to take any more pills. <clears throat> I have to ask God why he does some things the way he does. We can skip pollen season, but then we wouldn't have plants. And pollen's an irritant. So for every beautiful thing that you see growing behind me, there's pollen. That's that balancing act. Good and bad. You've got to have the good, and you've got to have the bad. And hopefully they balance themselves out. We have a few more days until Easter. Are we going to arise and go up in the clouds? Or the parallel with Egypt, is this where the plagues are going to start? And we're not released yet. We've got potential wars in a number of countries, a number of dictators that have sworn allegiance to Satan and his world. They can't attack us unless God says they can, because they're under the command of Satan, and Satan's been restrained. How much longer are we going to restrain him? Believe me, he's ready to go right now, and he's still going to do his damage. You know, I lost a, a cat recently. I can't stop. God comforted me through that. <clears throat> Driving home tonight, my check engine light came on. Now, everything else looked okay, so I went ahead and drove home. I'm going to have to have it looked at. Either that or get some black tape and cover up the light. But you got to have a computer to have it tell you what the problem is. Or one of those adapters for your phone. You could do that. But I think I can just take it and they will tell me. I suspect it's just nothing more than a bad gas cap. That can cause your light to come on. Or one of the hoses underneath that have to do with emissions a government-sponsored device. See, Satan finds ways to get into your life in all kinds of ways. The government's coming up with new sideways laws to restrict gun use. Satan won't give up. He never will give up until God deals with him. And God already has a plan for that. So we don't want to inter interfere with that because we want that to end. <clears throat> We've got Satan and his horde coming to earth. That's going to be bad, potentially, not for us, but for the world. We also have all the really, really, really bad angels that are in the pit that are going to be released. That's where all the bad stuff is going to come from that we read about in Revelation. Don't wait to make up your mind. If you're sitting on the fence, get off it. It won't hurt you. It costs nothing to accept Christ. You say, well, I have to give up all these things. What have you got that's so valuable that your life is worth throwing away? I don't have a lot right now. I don't need it. I could go out and bring in more money. I'm only bringing in enough to help me and my family. Because I find myself in these days helping my family more. I don't need anything, but they do, so I'm trying to help out. So when I say I have to go to work, it's not for me. God has taken care of me. But unfortunately, 
my family has found themselves in different straits that they have to have help getting out of. Yeah. Everyone's an individual. And we all have to learn. Sometimes it's the hard way. But when it comes to the rapture, you don't want to miss out. The hard way is really bad. I'm hoping that the rapture is soon. My family is saved, but I don't know about yours. Now would be a good time to bury the hatchet, as they say. If you've got someone that's mad at you or you're mad at them, in the love of Christ, go to them and ask for forgiveness. Reestablish your relationship again. You can't talk to them about the Lord if you don't do that. And when they ask you what brought this on, say, Jesus was working on your heart and you felt compelled to do that. There's an open door right there to discuss Jesus. If the rapture is Easter, you don't have a lot of time. And this is the time where we will see families getting back together to celebrate the Easter bunny, if nothing more. There's a good time for you to do this. But again, don't be hitting people over the head with their 50-pound Bible. Do all this in love. If nothing more, you're planting a seed. But maybe they'll join us. Okay. I'm going to continue making my once-a-day videos as we talk about this. I hope they encourage you to get out and help others. Help yourself first, because you have to be able to help others by doing that. If you've got a problem and you can't reach out, <clears throat> somebody has to be taking care of you. Talk to them about Jesus. Ask if they will read the Bible to you. That's a good way to introduce them. John's a good place to start. Do what you can in the time that we have left. So again, until we meet in the skies, the clouds, whatever he's got for us, God bless.